God, we just want to test our volume this morning to make sure that everything seems to be sound and fine. <clears throat> um, give us a minute. We greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a little bit of a delay, so um, I'm just checking all our knobs and volumes and all that stuff, uh, making sure that um, everything is fine. If you bear with me one second, we want to get those on Facebook also. We want to get those on Facebook. I want to check with my... Praise God. Amen. So everything is good. So let's get those on Facebook. Um, so we could greet as soon, as soon as we see people jump on here. On <coughs> our Facebook also. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, everything seemed to be going well on our website, also on Facebook. So, greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're so glad that you could join us this morning on a Sunday morning, where we come to worship the Lord, come to praise the Lord. And, um, and uh, Facebook is now going on. We haven't seen anybody uh, on the Facebook yet. But um, but we uh, our sound seemed to be good, our volume seemed to be good, our video seemed to be good. So, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, it's so good to know that the week has gone, the week has gone down, the week has gone by, I mean, and we are the ups and the downs and the good things and the bad things and the squeezes on and we feel all, you know, sometimes we feel so pressured, we long to hear from, from the Lord. Lord, what is going on? What is happening? So, we have that opportunity this morning to come on a Sunday morning to come to seek the face of the Lord and not, not only to worship and to praise Him but to call upon His name and to hear what He has to say unto us this morning. So there is on Facebook the camera for the, um, the website is a little above the, um, our phone so you might be seeing me watching looking a little above um, not looking directly at you at Facebook but looking a little above um, uh, the camera 
so that you could see you could see um sorry amen praise god so praise god so um <clears throat> shall we turn to psalm 113 the book of psalms 113 praise god the book of psalms 113 blessed be the name of the lord we're going to open as we normally do with the book of psalms 113 Praise ye the Lord, praise ye, praise O ye servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from the time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God or who dwelleth on high? who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifted up the needy out of the dunghill, that he might set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. What a wonderful psalm to read this morning. Oh, worship the name of the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Shall we pray this morning? Father God, we come before you with joy on our heart, Lord God, putting aside the things that have gone by for the week, Lord, the ups and the downs and the ins and the outs and the problems and the issues and the pressures and whatever it may be, Lord. We are coming, Lord, now into the presence of Almighty God. We are coming into the presence of the King of Kings, all by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come in by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because we could enter boldly, Lord. Father, our sins are many, our mistakes are many, our faults are many, our failings are many. We're still in human skin. Your word said, Lord, to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect, Lord. You have sent us a perfect message in the Bible how to come to perfection, Lord. And we follow in the best we could. We are children, Lord. You know how it is with children. They fall, they get up, they stumble, they hit, stump their toe, they stump their knee, they cut their head, all these kind of things. All, all that they're trying to do is to walk like their father. <clears throat> all they're trying to do is to talk like their father. And that's what we're trying to do, Lord. So have mercy this morning. Have mercy upon us, Lord, because, Lord, we're going to talk about what's happening all in the world today, Lord Jesus. And you know what's taking place. Father God, but there's a warning out. But there's comfort also you send in. So Lord, sweep over your arms of mercy upon your people. Encircle them with your loving arms. Cast your garment of love upon them. Watch over them this morning. Heal the sick and afflicted. Those who are in need this morning, whether spiritual, physical or financial need, supply their need this morning. Lord, Father, may they put all their burdens at, at Calvary and may they open up their hearts to receive your word this morning. The pastors that are out there, Lord, may you touch them. May you heal them. They are your servants, Lord. And they, they, Lord, they fight a battle every day to bring this word to your people. Watch over them, touch them, heal them. Other believers, the Lord God, in their churches who might be listening or come on the archives to listen, Father, may you touch them. May you heal them. May you bless them. May you anoint them. And Father God, Lord, we pray for the Even Light Tabernacle. They're having a church service right now. And Brother James is there as ministering to the people. May you pour out your Holy Spirit unto the people, Lord God. May you bless them, O Lord God. We pray for the pastor, Brother Sankil Rangai, once again. May you raise him up, Lord. May you give him strength, Lord God, to stand on his feet, Lord, and speak the word of the Lord. May you bless his wife, Sister Evangeline, Lord, and strengthen her. Lord, you know our churches are affiliated together, Lord God. Lord, very closely, Lord. So bless Sister Evangeline, Lord, as she support her husband and help, Lord God, in this time, Lord, of need. And Father God, Lord, those others that are sitting and listening to your word, I will listen to the songs, Lord. May you anoint them, may you strengthen them, may you heal them. Touch your servant also this morning, so I could speak the word of the living God in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <coughs> and amen. And amen. Oh, His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. He brought me into his banqueting house, and his banner over me is love. 
Oh, His love, His love, His banner over me is love. He brought me into His banqueting house, and His banner over me is love. And His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. He brought me into His banqueting house, and His banner over me is love. His love, His love, His banner over me is love. He brought me into His banqueting house, and His banner over me is love. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. He loved us first before we even knew ourselves, before we knew anything. He loved us and He brought us into His banquet and house and His banner over us. He said, I love you. I love you before the foundation of the world. And when Jesus Christ is speaking to you, His member of His bride, He said, I love you. I love you so much. I give my life for you. I will not let things, evil things happen to you. Amen. I will protect you. I will guide you. I will show you in my way. That's he. That's him. That's our bridegroom. That's our precious and lovely Lord Jesus. That's our wonderful Savior. Amen. We're going to sing a song. I'm not too sure what number it is and what books and so on. It's called He Hideth My Soul. <clears throat> and if we have these uh, books, uh, that is the only believe with additions. It's a special book that was prepared by a brother from, I'm not so sure exactly where he prepared this book from. But, um, um, it's this book that we follow, and that is number 682. He hideth my soul. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasures I see. Amen. <clears throat> it's an old song. I hope I'll be able to remember the song and the, 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 the verse. Amen. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cliff of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hided my soul in the cliff of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hided my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hands. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. He taketh my burden away. <clears throat> he holdeth me up and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. And with numberless blessing each moment He crowns and filled with His fullness divine. I sing in my rapture all glory to God, for such a Redeemer is mine. And when clothed in His brightness, transported I rise to meet Him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, His wonderful love, I'll shower the millions on high. He had it, my soul, in the cliff of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He had it, my life, in the depths of His love, and covers me dear with His hand, and covers me dear with His 
hands. Amen. What wonderful words. <coughs> Amen. Of this song. Amen. What wonderful words. Amen. He taketh my burden away. When the trials come, when the clouds are in the sky, when the rain has come upon us, when the storm is upon us, what is it? Amen. He bring us into the cleft of the rock. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, praise God. Let's sing the song. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is something about that name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There is something about that name. O oh, kings and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something about his name. I'm still trying to get the right tune. Oh, there is something about that name. O oh, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. O oh, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name and your grace and mercy brought me through I'm living this moment because of you I want to thank you and praise you to your grace and mercy has brought me through. Let's sing it now. Your grace and mercy has brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you I want to praise you and thank you to your grace and mercy brought me to through. Amen. And that's what we could say is your grace and mercy have brought me through. Amen. All the trials you have gone through, all the tribulations you have gone through, all the mistakes, all the ups and the downs, your grace and mercy, Lord Jesus, has brought us through. You know, we could have died, we could have been in an accident. And how many times has He rescued us? How many times has He has saved us? Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's sing a hymn. An old time hymn, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. A shelter in the time of storm, amen. <clears throat> I don't, I'm not so sure what numbers it in different books. Uh, <clears throat> but it's a shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's our rock, amen. In Him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Secure whenever it'll be tied. A shelter in the storm, in the time of storm. Who it is? Jesus is the rock in the weary land. The weary land, even Jesus is the rock in the weary land. Praise the name of the Lord. We welcome those on Facebook. May God bless you all and those on the internet. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's sing the song. A shelter in the time of storm. 
The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure wherever it'll be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. The sheet by the defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no fools affright, a shelter in the time of storm. The region storms me round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave or see free treat, a shelter in the time of storm. O rock divine, O refuge there, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou my helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. O Jesus is a rock in the weary land, the weary land, the weary land, and Jesus is a rock in the weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is that rock. Amen. In the weary land, when you are, when you're feeling down, you go and you cling to the rock. Amen. When you're down, when you're feeling, you, you know, things not going too well, you pray, you seek the face of the Lord, cling unto the rock of ages. Amen. 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 Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So this morning, amen, we want to transition over to the word of the Lord. We want to do it a little early so we could uh, have enough time, amen, <clears throat> we have enough time to to um, to talk about the word of the Lord, amen. Let's sing the song, soon and very soon I'm going to see the king, just the chorus. Oh, soon and very soon, uh, we are going to see the King. And soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. And soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, oh, we are going to see the King. And no more sorrow, dear, oh, we are going to see the King. And no more sorrow, dear, we are going to see the King. And no more sorrow, dear, oh, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, we are going to see, no more sickness. Oh, and no more sickness, dear, oh, we are going to see the King. And no more sickness, dear, oh, we are going to see the King. And no more sickness, dear, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, we are going to see the King. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. <coughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just sing the song, Come Holy Spirit. We need thee, amen, as we want to transition over to the word of the Lord. O oh, come, Holy Spirit, we need thee. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy Power, O oh Lord, come in thine own gentle way. One more time. O oh, come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. 
and come, sweet spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy power, O Lord, come in thy own gentle Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, <coughs> welcome those on Facebook, welcome those on the internet and those who will come on the archives a little later. May God bless you richly. May He pour out His Holy Spirit upon you. We are so glad that you could join us in worship and praise unto our King of Kings. So this morning we like to turn to three portions of scriptures. We like to talk, we turn to three portions of scriptures. <coughs> Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The first portion of scripture will be Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, <coughs> verses 24 to 27. And then the book of Exodus chapter 12. <coughs> book of Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 to 13 and verse 28. Verses 12 to 13 and, verses and verse 28. And then the last portion of scripture, Psalms 91. The book of Psalms 91, verses 1 to 12. The book of Psalms 91. <clears throat> verses 1 to 12. Amen. So let's turn to the book of Matthew chapter 7 and let's read from verse 24 to 27. Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, Jesus is speaking, <clears throat> and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat down upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Amen. <coughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Let's read in the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 12, here it was. <clears throat> um, uh, here it was the last plague that they were talking about but this is what Israel must do Amen so God is speaking now Amen here is God speaking to the children of Israel through Moses <clears throat> Amen Exodus chapter 12 reading from verse 12 to 13 and we like to read verse <clears throat> 28 Amen verse 12 and I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Let's just read uh, verse 27. And, they, and that he might say, it is the Passover of the Lord's Passover. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. Who pass over the children. Who pass over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. When he smote the Egyptians. This is Moses speaking. And delivered our houses. And the people bowed their head and worshipped. Verse 28. And the children of Israel went away. And did as Moses had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. So understand they had to do exactly what Moses said. Not what uh, Job said and other people. No. What Adam said and other people in the Old Testament and so on. No. They had to listen exactly what Moses said. Exactly what Moses said. So let's turn to the last portion of scripture. The book of Psalms 91. A very familiar um, psalm. Amen. Book of Psalms chapter... Um, Psalms number 91, we're reading from verse 1 to 12. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. 
His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with an eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made me, made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habilitation, thy habitation. There shall no evil before thee, before thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Let's continue reading a little more. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon thou shalt trample upon under their feet. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. He shall call upon me and I'll answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him with honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. May the Lord add a blessing to the precious reading of his word. Shall we pray this morning? Oh, Heavenly Father, we just read these scriptures, Lord, and read Psalms 91. And Lord, there is that promise that you will, in the time of trouble, you will overshadow us with your wings, Lord. You will look over us, Lord. You would, you would, Lord, because you have set your love upon us, Lord. You will not let any harm or, or peril come upon us. A thousand will fall on the left and ten thousand on the right. Hallelujah. But you have promised in your word and this is your word. This is your promise to us because we are dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. We are dwelling in the secret place, O oh God, this morning. Father, Lord God, I pray this morning, Lord God, as we read your word, only you could come out from this word and Lord, make it alive to the people, Lord Jesus. May you quicken the hearts of the people, those on the internet, those on Facebook that are watching. May you, Lord God, quicken it to their hearts, Lord, that the Psalms 91, Lord, will be a quickening to them to know that nothing will harm them. You are overshadowing them, Lord. You are watching over them. But, what, but we must dwell in that secret place this morning. Father God, I pray for your people this morning. May they open up their hearts to receive your word. Touch them and, and may you strengthen them this morning, Lord. Oh God, Lord, touch your servant also, Lord God. I want to hear from you also. Lord God, and may your people, Lord God, rejoice. We sang songs of Zion. We look in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ and we sang wonderful songs of Zion and we, we felt blessed, we felt anointed. But now, Lord, we want to sit at your feet this morning. Comfort, oh great eternal supernatural being of the Holy Spirit. Comfort, uh, Lord, and quicken your people. Speak to us by your word. Lord, not my word, but your word, Lord, whatever it is you say, Lord. You know, Lord, when I studied last night, oh Lord, and I studied this morning, oh God, I didn't know the things that you would want me to say, Lord. I went back to an old message and got notes and so on, and you had me, Lord, recycle it once more to the people, Lord, with a little bit different, Lord, an update of what's happening. So, Father God, Lord, this is not my doing, Lord. It is you, Lord, now quicken it to your people. Anoint the ears of your people. Touch the sick and afflicted. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you all. This morning, for a title of our message, and I put it on Facebook and I put it on the, web, the, the, the website, and I also put it on our chat group. Amen. For a title this morning, A Shelter in the Time of the Storm. A Shelter in the Time of the Storm. Amen. A shelter in the time of the storm. And what is our subject? Our subject has always been our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the subject of the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's Jesus Christ you must see in the scripture. And that's what the scripture is unfolding. That's what our message is always unfolding. Then our subject is Jesus Christ is our rock in the time of the storm. Our subject is Jesus Christ is our rock in the time of the storm. And what is our inspiration? Why are we looking at this, this particular topic about the shelter and the storm? Amen. We want to know what is this storm. This is our inspiration. What is the storm? We want to identify the storm. Sorry. And then where can we find this shelter? How do we know that we are in this shelter? So our inspiration is what is the storm? And where, where can we find shelter in the time of this storm? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, you know, a lot of people might be saying, 
Well, Brother C. Pasad, you have been real negative over the last few services. You seem like you sound like a prophet of doom and, <laughs> and all that stuff. But I just want to tell you a little bit about um, what we believe, amen. As you know, my name is Brother Virgil C. Pasad. I'm the pastor of the Bride Age Christian Fellowship. It's more of an internet church than a real physical church because of the lockdowns and so on. We do um, assembly here <coughs> in, our, um, in our home, amen. And we transmit in our, from our home. And uh, there are, uh, you know, friends and family, individuals that might come in our home. And that's where we have the church. But most of our believers who uh, fellowship with us are there out in the internet. And I looked and sometimes there are as much as 140 countries that would log in and, and come in there. There are sometimes uh, 300 visits uh, to our website to log in to hear our, our, um, our church services through the website. Amen. But then there are a lot of other people on... on um, on uh, Facebook and I see my cousins are there and my friends, co-workers and my nieces are there and so on on Facebook. God bless you all richly. Amen. I pray that God will speak unto you today to know that the time we're living in and how important it is is to get into this shelter that we're going to talk about. <clears throat> Amen. So we believe in a, in a message, in seven messages that, <clears throat> that God gave to seven church ages. And I can't go into the detail today again, but you could go onto uh, our website and click on mission. And there's a 55 minute, uh, 11 seconds video <clears throat> that explains to you what we believe, how we believe it, and what we're looking for. But the main thing is that we're looking for a rapture. And we believe that just as, as uh, God sent uh, Peter, Paul, and James, and Moses, and Elijah, and Joshua, and uh, Ezekiel, and Nehemiah, and all these men, Amen. In this last day, he has sent a man, a prophet, to identify the coming of the Lord. Now, there were seven church ages. If you read Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, there are seven church ages. Now, it's not seven church ages to the Jews, but seven church ages to the Gentiles. According to Paul, God has turned away from the Jews and come to give salvation to the Gentiles. Now, he has not forsaken the Jews. He's going to return. They are his people. They are his children. They are his people. Amen. But we are members of the bride. Amen. Which is a different group. Amen. The, the Bible says that Christ went and got a Gentile bride. Just as Joseph in, um, in Egypt, he got Asenath. Asenath was a Gentile woman. Amen. She was an Egyptian. Amen. He married an Egyptian woman in the same way as Joseph typed Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has, is marrying a Gentile bride. And you and I are part of the Gentile bride. You know, you say, Brother Sipa said, I can't understand how that could be. Well, we all are member. No, it's not a physical thing. Like how you and your wife would be. You could only have one wife. Amen. Amen. According to the scripture. Amen. It's not like that. Amen. It's like, uh, if you want to type it on a higher realm, it's like Solomon having all these wives. Amen. They all, but it's, it's a far more than that. You are part and parcel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are bone of His bone. You are flesh of His flesh. Spirit of His spirit. Amen. And this morning you are, mo you are multi-member of one body. That body is called the bride of Jesus Christ. But that, that body has fingers and hands and nose and eyes and feet and legs and, and torso and so on. Amen. So you might be a finger. Next one might be a two. Might be a, but you are all members. Of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what I want to explain to you tonight, to this morning. Amen. So we believe that God sent seven messengers. Paul and Irenaeus and Martin and Columbia and uh, Luther and Wesley. And in this last day he sent a messenger. William Marion Branham that fulfilled Revelation chapter 10 verse 7. But, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel messenger. When he shall begin to sound. The mystery of God will be finished as I have declared it unto my servants a prophet. How do you know a prophet? A prophet is someone that speaks the word and it comes to pass. A prophet is someone who takes the word and interprets it to the people by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit through the prophet interprets the word. The pro prophet also prophesy of things to come. Just like, just like, uh, you know, Isaiah prophesy, behold, a virgin shall conceive. It didn't take place for 700 years. So probably for 700 years, the critic and the unbeliever said he was a false prophet. But the true believer held on until uh, Gabriel was sent from the present, uh, presence of God to a woman called Mary and of Nazareth. Amen. So a prophet will speak. He may die and go on, but his word will come to pass. And we'll talk a little bit about that this morning. So this man is called William Marion Branham. And he fulfilled what the Bible say in Amos. 
It says, I, was, uh, I could do nothing. God himself is saying this, you know. When God says something, it's forever settled. He don't go back and say, oh no, I didn't mean it that way. No, 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 no. God is supernatural God. Never make a mistake. His yea is nay, his nay is nay. I remember he tell Balaam, don't go. Amen. Don't go, don't go, don't go. If you go, there's going to be a lot of problems. Amen. So, you know, Balaam decided to want to do it his own way and said, well, God said, listen, go, go, but you better say what I tell you to say. Amen. No, you say, well, God changed his mind. No, he didn't. He told him, beginning, don't go. But what happened? Seeing, God seen that Balaam was going to be disobedient and Balaam paid for it, you know, he did. He was going to be disobedient. He said, well, okay, go, whatever. But you better say what I say. Amen. So what we are saying is that um, also Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 identify this prophet. He said, Behold, I'll send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This is a promise. Remember, this is, this is the last scriptures in the Old Testament. It's a promise. I will send you Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord. Lest I come and smite you with a curse. Lest means I'm going to do it. Amen. That's just the old English interpretation. So God said before the world is going to be consumed in fire, I'm going to sell Elijah to warn the people. See, God is a God of love and mercy. Amen. When He made angels, when He, made, when he created us, we all had a choice. Amen. Adam and Eve had a choice. So God is, doesn't want robots. He doesn't want robots. Amen. He wants someone to love Him unconditionally. He wants someone, someone to serve Him and to wish Him unconditionally and when he found that man died he prepared a sacrifice the Lord Jesus Christ died so we could come back unto him so when God say yea he say yea and nay is nay he said behold I'll send you Elijah the prophet then you got to look in your day in this end time that we know is the end time and look across the world and see who can we identify with that anointing of the spirit of Elijah we look at Billy Graham. Mm -mm, he is a wonderful evangelist. We look at all Roberts. Sure, there were signs and wonders flow for following, but watch what he preached. And then we look at Billy Sunday, and now we look at Spurgeon, and we look at all these other men, and we can't we can't see no other man but a man called William Marion Branham that went across all over the world. There were about almost a half a million people in one of his meetings in India and in South Africa and signs and wonders and miracles. I mean the books they can't, didn't even say enough and manifestation of the Holy Spirit in his life. He was an humble man. He said he was even offered a million, 1.2 million dollar check and refused it. He will not have that because he doesn't want, he wants to be led of the Lord. He wants God to provide. Amen. I remember a guy, Brother Branham prayed for a man's a man wife and the man's wife was healed. The man was a rich man. I think he woke up, when he went to the prayer line, he woke up to the pulpit and Brother Branham discerned him, discerned it by the Holy Spirit that he was, um, that his wife was healed. The man brought a check and gave it to Brother Branham and when Brother Branham looked at it, I think it was like about $50,000 or something like that. Brother Branham said, no, I could never receive this. Brother Branham took the check up because it was written to Brother Branham's name. He took the check up and he tore it up. He said, brother, I will never do that. I will let the Lord provide for my need. And if I, and when I go out on the field, if I don't have enough money or offerings doesn't come in, I will go and work, amen, and I'll make sure uh, to spread the gospel because that's my commission. So you now you could Google brother William Marion Branham and you could see a lot of different things. But you know, I just want, to, want you to note something, brothers and sisters. Every single man born of a woman, amen, every single man I'm talking about, amen, has made mistakes, a failure, amen, every single from Adam come all the way down to right now have made mistakes, have done things wrong, amen, has failed God many times, except one man, amen, one man born of a woman, Amen. That never made a mistake. That never did anything wrong. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the only perfect one. I have my faults. I have my mistake. I get upset sometimes. I get feel pressed. I feel when the, the squeeze are coming upon me, I feel down. I feel I have to go down in prayer and say, Lord, this pressure is upon me. So I myself make mistakes too. So don't even look at me, brother and sister. I make mistakes too. But, but the, the thing about it, I confess my faults before the Lord. He forgive me. But remember one thing, as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, a servant, uh, he, uh, he, uh, 
He fails only in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Stands or fall only in the eyes of his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So don't judge your pastor. Don't judge your minister. Don't judge your associate pastor. God has allowed him to do certain things. Leave it alone. Just pray for him. Amen. Now if you see him going off the word, then take the scripture and go to him and talk to him. Amen. So that's what we believe. So that's what I believe. And I believe that this prophet, just like Moses tell the ministry, the, the people of Israel, that you must lay the lamb. You must put it on the doorpost and lintel of your, of your house. You must do this. And if you don't do this, then the death angel is going to take your, your firstborn. But if you do it, the death angel is going to pass by. You know what they did? We read the scripture in, uh, in uh, Exodus 12, uh, 28. It says, what did they do? They went and did all that Moses uh, said. What if they went back to the book of Job and they said, Job, which was before Moses wrote the Old Testament, five books of the Old Testament, and said, you know, let's see what Job says here. Job's never talk about slain a lamb and the death angel, you know. I don't want to think I want to listen. No, if they had only done that, they would have died. If they have gone over to their friend's house, um, you know, some Egyptian and get out of Goshen and go down in Egyptian house and having a little drink with them and relaxing. They were good friends, maybe some of them. They would have died. He could have been circumcised on the eighth day. He could have a true born a Jew or Israelite, but he just, he just was on out of the word of the Lord. And in the same way, I'm saying tonight. I mean, sorry, this morning. That this word that Brother Branham brought, an angel of God came behind that word, behind his messages, and vindicated by signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. The dead raised, the blind see, hands that are crippled up, open up, feet that were clubbed and short, grew out. I mean, I, I can't even tell you the amount of, of, of disease, uh, disease were healed. But most of all, the soul of the people were healed. They came to God and they came and received the Holy Spirit and God one came into the kingdom of God. Now if you need to know more about Brother Branham and his message, you can visit www.branham.org and there you'll find a lot of all Brother Branham tapes and um, all his messages, he made some videos and encouragement. And this uh, website is run by Brother Billy Paul Branham and Brother Joseph Branham and we support that website that he could send this message to all over the world. Amen. They're doing a great job right now of sending these tablets to all over the world that people would, was able to have the, all the messages in a little tablet called the Agapo tablet. Amen. It's, uh, and they're sending it and I'm sure believers in Trinidad and other places. And this is the tablet this morning. Yeah, uh, it's kind of would show upside down <laughs> in the camera. But this is the little tablet that they're showing. They're giving to the believers all over. Most of it is free for the, the believers that are unfortunate and cannot explain it. All That has all Brabrana messages. And if you want to know more about us, as I said, you could go on our website, on the missions, and there's a 55 minute, 11 seconds video. It will tell you exactly my testimony of how I come to the Lord and what the Lord has done in my life. Amen. So this morning... Um, again, you know, people, someone say to you, me, oh, you're saying the same thing over and over and over again. But I have to do this, brother. I'm pushed by the Holy Spirit. I have to remind you. You know, and uh, there's a scripture for this. Amen. I think in First Peter, um, in First Peter chapter 1, he said, but I want to rehearse it to your ears. Amen. Rehearse it. Amen. And that's what I'm doing. I'm rehearsing it. Now it might sound all gloom and doom and brother Sipasad, you sound like a prophet of doom and gloom and but you know, I want to show you the gloom. I want to show you the doom. I want to show you the, the things that are happening all around you. Now you are aware of it. But sometimes, you know, the Bible says we need to rehearse it in our ears. Amen. <clears throat> so I want to talk about what is happening all around us. I want to talk about the woes that are upon the earth. I want to talk about the germ warfare that's going on. Talk about the bombs that are hanging out there. Amen. You know what is happening. You know that the weather is, is, is uh, all kind of crazy and storms and hurricanes and earthquakes and sinkholes and all these things. It's a crazy time. It has never been like this all since man was formed. Amen. And then the weather is changing. Then man had a feeling for fear. The Bible says men, a heart. A feeling for fear. What is going on? He didn't say women heart, but he said men hearts are feeling for fear. Men, more men are getting heart attack because they worry, they concerned. Amen. 
and then there was this little nation down in the, in the, in the, in the Asian peninsula down there in the Eastern Asia peninsula there has bombs that could hit your country and just press a, press a button and then there's this country of Russia uh, you know somebody brother Ramsey like uh, will, will press a button after drinking some vodka and then here goes the war then there's unrest in the country amen there's rioting there's burning Hundreds and thousands of businesses are being closed. People are losing their job. Amen. The, the, all the government is doing is printing the money. We got to understand that there are woes upon you. This is the storm. Excuse me. This is the storm that we're talking about. I'm identifying you the storm. And that's in the physical realm. That's the storm that is taking place. Woes upon the earth. Amen. You have to wear a mask. You have to, you know, social distancing. And then here's what they're saying. Then you, they want you to take this vaccine. But here's what they're saying. Well, the vaccine is not really going to protect you from the virus. You will get, still get the virus. You will. Hear what they're saying. You, know, you will still get the virus. Amen. But maybe, maybe, that's what they're saying. This Dr. Fauci, and I call him Dr. Jones, he's saying, maybe, uh, it might, you mightn't get it so bad. Maybe. But it could, that vaccine will also help you for a mirage of other, uh, of a, a whole, is mirage you use? Forget the word you use. A host of other diseases. So this whole thing is an experimental thing. They even don't know the full effects. They're warning you about side effects, what to do, how to be careful, amen. They believe that even the side effects are going to overwhelm the hospitals more than the virus itself, amen. We know about this. We see what is taking place, amen. You know about it. I'll read some quotes. But we want to find out what did the prophets say? What did the Bible say? What did the prophets? What did the Bible say? Now everything is just as it was in the days of Noah. Just as it was in the days of Jonah and Moses. When Moses had that plague. Amen. So shall it be in this day. Amen. Praise God. And unrest, rioting and, and, and insurrection and, 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 and crime is on the rise. Brother and sister, if you're old as me, if you look back, it was never like this was never like this. It seemed like just overnight this has happened. Nobody has any respect for anybody again. Amen. Amen. Diseases. Diseases. Amen. You think cancer is a, is, is, is a disease that you worry about? Oh, there's going to be diseases worse than cancer. Amen. Who knows that when they take this vaccine, a lot of people are, I saw on the internet, Amen. Where people complain. One of them had palsy, some sort of palsy. The other one all, uh, you know, bumps and bruises and, 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 and boils. And I don't know. There, and then there are people who died. Amen. Because of it. Amen. Have a real urge, uh, allergic reaction. Nobody knows if you're going to have a, uh, uh, allergic reaction if you haven't taken the flu shot. Amen. Then you don't know if you have a, uh, uh, um, uh, allergic reaction. You don't know. I had a, a close friend to the family took the flu shot and she had a, she almost died. Amen. Amen. And my family is also has, uh, has issues with allergies. My mother has allergies to penicillin and other things. My sisters have allergy. My sister has allergy to shellfish and my daughter has allergies and we have allergies also. We don't know when we, if we take this vaccine, what is going to happen to us. Amen. <coughs> Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But we'll cross that time. Cross it when it comes, when it becomes mandatory. So let's look, amen. So what I was telling you about is that Brother Branham prophesied, amen. In a physical realm, we talk about a physical realm of the germs and the atomics and the bombs and so on. So let's talk about it a little bit. I just want to rehearse in your ears a little bit of what is taking place, amen, in this world, amen. Praise God, amen. God's provided way of healing. Chicago, Illinois, Monday the 19th of July, 1954. AM service, paragraph E42, quote Brother Branham, what is cancer? What is a disease? We'll deal on that for the next five minutes or so. What is cancer? What caused that thing? Let's take a cancer. Anything you wish to take, tubercle, pneumonia, whatever you wish to, disease, any disease. Disease are germs. Let me press something here, quickly, as our time's going. Listen, do you know the Bible predicts that in the last days there'll be germ warfare? That diseases will break out upon the people and will fall on everyone without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the angel or who had charge over this place was given orders to touch no one with whom the mark was. Why? How much kind of teachers have we to God to be brethren to get the church in order to be in that 
that condition immune. You see what Baba I'm saying, I interject here? He is telling us when we see these plagues coming, we have to do what? We have to get the church in order. Amen. To be in that condition, to be immune. And how you get is there by the inoculation of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. By the inoculation of the Spirit of Christ into you, into your heart. That's how you buy the vaccine of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Hear what Brother Ram say. Now in those days, uh, way back in the 50s, Brother Ram had to travel overseas. They had to pump you up with all these malaria and all these other things. Amen. These vaccines or whatever. Here, otherwise you can't travel. Hear what Brother Ram say. My arms are sore now from where the doctors have knee, has knee, punched needles in to try to inoculate me against yellow fever and so forth. I told them I don't need it. But they wouldn't listen to me. But I tell you what God is going to do. God's got a serum. Serum. And it's called the Holy Ghost. And when that serum goes in, it will inoculate you. Hallelujah. In this last days. End of quote. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What is it? It's the, it is the serum of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a serum. Oh, we just have to turn the air conditioning. It's getting a little hot. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So what are we looking? Amen. What is, what is, what is the Bible saying? What is Brother Branham saying? That is angel. Amen. That is, has the plague. Was commissioned not to go to those that have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now remember we talk about a physical plague. Amen. And we're going to talk a little bit about a spiritual plague in a few minutes. Amen. And what the spiritual plague means. Hear what Brother Branham says. Amen. God's provided way of healing. Chicago, Illinois. Same, same book. Amen. Paragraph 44. Same tape. Paragraph 44. Quote. But look friend. The time is coming. That when there is a rising up in the church. If you can't have faith for divine healing, how are you going to have faith for the rapture? We have got to move out, friend. We've got to get out of this old, slow church condition that we're in. Step out, launch out, cut the shorelines and get out into somewhere where you lose all senses of fear and doubt. Out there, where all things are possible, brother, just as free as it can be, you've got to sail out towards heaven and nothing can stir you nowhere. You're gone that way. That's it. Nothing can harm you. Now, that's the kind of church it's going to be. One of these days, according to the Bible, when the angel poured out his wrath and diseases broke out and men even rotted in their flesh while they were standing and the fall of the air came down and eat off the shoulders and eat the flesh of captains, chief captains and great men and presidents and warriors and diplomats and potentates and everything eat. But the angel was given charge. Don't you come near anyone that got the seal of God in their forehead. It's going to be one of these days divine healing is going to be a great thing among the people. So let's get in that condition. Gods want us there. The Bible said the, uh, the Bible said the hour has come. Amen. And his bride has made herself ready. Herself ready. End of quote. So what we're talking about, there are more plagues going to come upon you. It's going to get worse. This is only the beginning of the storm. Amen. This is only the beginning of the plagues and the, and the disasters that are going to come upon the earth. Amen. And we preached last uh, Wednesday about uh, California sinking to the sea. Do you know what kind of the disaster is that, brother? It was prophet, brother, sister. It was prophesied, brother, William Marion Branham, that California is going to sink into the sea. You know what disaster is that? You know how much million people are going to lose their lives? The water is going to come a mile high, that tidal wave. Think about when you throw a stone in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bucket of water. You see this wave pushes its side. And that's what's going to happen when this sinks into the sea. This California sinks into the sea. Oh, be warned, you people who live in California. You should get out. Get out behind the Arizona line. Amen. Behind the Arizona line because the water is going to come all the way to the salt and sea. No, I didn't say this, brother. I didn't say this. Brother Branham, William Marion Branham said this. He prophesied and he said if it doesn't happen, he's a false prophet. Amen. He prophesied something else. A few other things and we're going to come to that in a few minutes. Amen. So that's what God, that's what happened all along. It's perplexity, disease, sickness. Amen. Press, economic press. People losing their jobs. All sorts of things are happening. The governments don't know what to do. Amen. They are trying. They don't know what to do. They are fearful. Amen. Let's read. 
the end time evangelism, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Sunday the 3rd of June 1962, paragraph 108, quote, Prabhanam, no, no, we want to think of another one here. If you want to read some of it, Matthew 24, Jesus told of this day, he said the Jews will gather again at that last day. He said, when you see the fig tree putting forth its buds, then know that the time is at hand. He said, there'll be a perplexity of time, distress between nations, the sea roaring, man failing of heart trouble constantly. It's not among the women now, it's amongst the men. Jesus never said women, men, women. He said men, look at the plague, and in that day he shall come to pass. That would be the end time sign. Hearts failing, fear, perplexity. Amen. Revelation. When it spoke, the prophet speaking of this day, he said there will become a time that the church will be lukewarm. The ladies of church age in the last day. See? End of quote. Amen. What are we looking for? Amen. What are we seeing all around us first? Before I tell, we talk about what is looking for. What is happening to all around us? Perplexity. Amen. What we talk about? Amen. Germ warfare. Atomics. The weather condition. Man heart attack. Feeling for fear. Wars. Nuclear wars, North Korea is a little country that could, could send a nuke to right here to the, the coast of America, amen, he threatens us, amen, wars, rumors of wars, unrest in the country, amen, riots, insecurity, amen, people don't know what to do, no job, people are, soon people will start to starve, amen, <coughs> I'm sorry, soon there's going to be a crash in the economy, all the pundits are, are, pre, are prophesying this, it was held up by, I don't know exactly what is held up, by the feds and all that stuff, but it's going to be a crash in the economy when all when uh, unemployment ends, when people are over 25 million people without a job. What is going to happen when about 15 percent, maybe 13, 14 percent of the workforce and maybe more? And do you know they part the numbers? So we don't even know the truth, though we know I know a lot of people out of jobs and so on. That's what the the reports are saying. And what is going to happen? Amen. Perplexity. Amen. Just like the plagues of the Old Testament. Let's read. Question and answers on Genesis. Jeffersonville, Indiana. COD book. Wednesday the 29th of July 1953. Quote. Perbanum. Paragraph 243. Amen. Now look back in the Old Testament. When you see the plagues falling. They were in Egypt one day. And God was bringing His people out of the promised land. Is that right? And Israel never received one plague. Just as the plagues before it went. They went into Goshen. See? see? Goshen. Is that right? And the sun never did dim out. No mosquitoes came. No frogs there. No lice there. No storms were there. No lightning was there. No killing of the cattle was there. And everything that was preserved in Goshen. Is that right? It's a type of the church going just before the tribulation period. Jesus said, When these things come to pass, lift up your head. Your redemption draw it nigh. And I interject. A shelter in the time of storm. When that you see in all these plagues, when you see things that are happening, what is happening? You have a shelter in the time of storm. Amen. Hear what Brother Bram say again. I believe that the moon and the stars and the sun, I'll go ahead and read it. It said, And man run and hid themselves and fell upon and sought to kill themselves and couldn't do it and everything. I believe that takes place just before the tribulation. Now watch. The tribulation comes. And when the tribulation strikes, the church goes up. Now remember, just an ordinary church without the Holy Ghost goes through the tribulation period. It's only the elect that goes through. And I could rub something here. Now, just a minute. Ooh, uh, amen. The, what is the rapted people call? The remnant? Is that right? I mean, it's the bride. That's the rapted people. But the remnant was left. End of quote. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Branham said we are living in the last days. We are living in the seventh trumpet. In the seventh plague. Amen. Hallelujah. That's where we are. Amen. Oh blessed be the name of the Lord. Here's a quote on the seven church ages. Actually uh, I'm just going to read this quote quickly to lay a background. For those who, uh, a lot of you who read Brother Branham's message. Seven church ages. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Wednesday the 12th of May 1954. And it's the last part of the paragraph 25. Hear what Brother Branham say. Amen. And then there's seven church ages, seven plagues, seven seals, seven trumpets. Now when, it, uh, when a trumpet represents a war, 
and a seal, a mystery and fool, and a plague is what follows every war. And now by God's help, and with a book of history, I can prove to you that we are living at the seventh trumpet, for the seventh plague, and the seventh seal to be opened, and the seventh vial to be poured out. Amen. And continue to quote paragraph 30. And when the sixth one sounded, we'll get out that maybe the sealing away on Friday night, when the first world war, and the sixth trumpet sounded accordingly, exactly to the time God spoke of it, exactly, geographically, falling the seal before that. And when the mystery was revealed in there for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the people then, how the church did not move up and those who were moving refused to walk in the light and went back. And the plague was opened at that time and poured out upon the earth, which was influenza that killed all the people as it did, the thousand times thousand. And then coming down into this last age. Hear what Brother Bram identifying? Coming in this last age. Just come and listen what the Lord has to say about it in His Word. Now that isn't a makeup. I'll just be reading it like a newspaper right out of the Word of God. For this is His direct revelation to the church. To the church. To revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. End of quote. And Brother Bram said we are coming down to the last plague. Amen. And what is the last plague? Spiritual death. And we'll talk about it a little bit. Amen. First we have all these earthquakes. We have wars. Rumors of wars. Tidal waves. See a roaring man had uh, failing for fear. Perplexity of time. Distress between nations. Horseless carriages on the way. All these things. But the last plague is death. No, not physically speaking. But spiritually speaking. Death. Spiritually in the church. Amen. Spiritually speaking. Amen. Hallelujah. And right now today. Hallelujah. Today. Praise God. Amen. It's exactly happening. Now, Brother Branham, Amen. Look back on the days of JFK and the election and all this stuff. Amen. And what he talked about, I'm not going to repeat all that he has said. You go and, and follow it in Brother Branham's message. But I'm going to, to, to point out to you, Amen, that Brother Branham typed in the same day of JFK. Is in this, and he's saying there's coming also a, a time like that. Now, JFK was a, a Roman Catholic. And he said, we're going to have another Roman Catholic president. But he said, he saw a woman. He saw a woman standing there. And she was all dressed in a purple dress. Amen. And she was standing there, a woman of great importance. Now, Burbanum was transformed. Amen. He was translated from way back in 1961. Amen. I would presume, or 33, whatever it was. Amen. 1933, he was transmi- transformed. 1933. All the way to 2021 in January 20th. Amen. And this is what he saw. Amen. And I, and someone sent me a picture of our vice president in a purple, in a purple dress. And this fulfilled exactly what the Bible says. I know one minister, I was telling him, I said, brother, this is a physical and a spiritual application. This woman is exactly what Brother Branham prophesied about. Going to be a vice president and then and probably president. It is a real fulfillment of the prophet. The brother tell me, well, you know, no, 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 that has happened already before in the Roman Catholic Church. But every, every uh, prophecy has a double meaning. Sometimes a triple meaning. It's always physical and always spiritual. Now hear this prophet prophesy of what took place in January 20th. Uh, 2021. And I only found this quote very recently. Someone sent it to me. Amen. The 70th week of Daniel, Jeffersonville, Indiana, uh, Sunday, the 6th of August, 1961. Paragraph two, uh, 206. Quote Barbaranum. Hear what is? He's equating how election with John F. Kennedy. He's hinting something to you, brother. Listen, read between the lines. Quote Barbaranum. And that brings us then to the election of President Kennedy. And this car coming on the scene, bringing five things out of the seven that has happened exi- exactly. No, we didn't say the sixth thing, you know. He said the five things. But the sixth thing he talked about is a woman, a, a vice president, and also the Roman Catholic Church coming in as uh, taking control. Hear what Brother Brown said, quote, And I predicted and said, I saw a great woman stand up, beautiful looking, Dressed in really highly royals like purple. And I got a little parenthesis right here. She was a great ruler in the United States. And perhaps a Roman Catholic Church. A woman. Some woman. I don't know her to be the Roman Catholic Church. I don't know. I can't say. Only thing I seen. I seen the woman. That was all. And I wish I somehow I could show you this, uh, this picture of a 
of a vice president standing there, standing. Amen. He said she raised up and she stood to take the oath of office as a vice president. And she was wearing what? Royal purple. Now you, how can you not say that this prophet prophesied the truth, brother, sister? This is the word of God. He prophesied. He said it was. Continuing the quote. But this is a woman's nation. This nation is number 13 in prophecy. She got 13 stripes, 13 stars. She started 13 colonies. 13, 13, 13. Everything is 13. Appears in the 13th chapter of Revelation. Even she's 13 and she's a woman nation. End of quote. So here this prophet prophesied. He saw this woman stand. It's a vision. It's a vision. He's standing. She is standing, taking the oath. You know, he just saw, saw the angel showed him the vision. Dressed in purple. No, this tells you that this prophet is a vindicated prophet of God. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to read to you again what he said way back in 1963. He talked about wars. He talked about germ warfare, remember? He talked about viruses and so on. Here he identified exactly, exactly a type of plague that's going to strike us. Exactly. And then what? He also identified a doctor. And I put in parentheses, uh, Dr. Jones, that was the one that's kind of leading and telling people what to do and how to take care of it. And he'll know how to take care of it. Everybody say, oh, Dr. Jones is going to know how to take care of it. Oh, every, uh, oh, and tell me the most famous doctor that is all over the internet telling you about the updates on the virus. Who is it? Let's read this first and then I'll assert his name. <coughs> Sorry. Praise God. Accepting God's provided way at the end time. Phoenix, Arizona. The 15th of January, 1963. <laughs> Look at the dates too. Amen. Paragraph 2.112. Paragraph 212. Quote, Rabbanam. Israel needed a way out of Egypt. They wanted somewhere. Some military... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. Amen. They needed some way. <coughs> I'm sorry. Some military strength or something to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. God provided a prophet with a vindicated, with a vindicated original word, <coughs> Moses. That's right. They wanted the army to rise up and take them out and beat the Egyptians down. But God sent them the word, the prophet with the vindicated word of God that spoke before to Abraham, saying, Thy seed, thy seed shall sojourn in a strange land, and I will visit them with a mighty hand. The word that God had spoke, they were crying for deliverer, and God sent them a prophet with a word. God had a provided way to tell the difference between the believer and the unbeliever. Paragraph 2.13 Now some of them said, Well now, if the plague falls, we'll just go to the hospital. If the plague happens to fall, you know what we'll do? We'll go get Dr. Jones, and I put in in parentheses, interject Dr. Fauci. He will know how to take care of it. You see this prophet? I interject here. He saw a vision of our Dr. Fauci talking about how to take care of it. This is the said Lord. This is a prophet. He probably didn't. He just said Dr. Jones. I'm not sure. He just used a general term. Here what they say. We'll get Dr. Jones. Dr. Fauci. He will know how to take care of it. It didn't work. Yet they were smart. Well, if the plague falls, we'll go down beneath the ground in a cave and shut the door. That wouldn't do it one bit of good. We'll stay in the house and put on a mask, put on a mask over our face and put some disinfectant on it. Wouldn't do a bit of good. I interject here. What, what is this? Is a compulsion or you wear a mask? And he said what? Stay home. Do you know, do you know the United Kingdom is a lockdown? You can't leave your house except essential services and going to grocery. That's all. So what did Brabham? Brabham talk about lockdown. Don't you understand this? Never in the history has something happened like this what Brabham talk about. Amen. He talked about it in 63. Amen. And it's coming to pass today, 2020, 2021. This is a prophet with a vindicated word of God. Continue to quote. God made a provided way. Yes, and what was it? The blood. God provided as as simple as it need to be. The blood of the Lamb. Amen. And then now, uh, continuing the quote, paragraph 218. 
uh, it's got to be God instructed. And that's the Holy Spirit by the word. And the Holy Spirit will never instruct anything but the word. Because it is the Holy Spirit. Man moved or oh, wrote the Bible by the Holy Spirit. God's provided way. So what, end of quote, what Brother Branham saying? There's only one way to get shelter. There's only one way to get a shelter in the storm of lockdown and, and economic crisis and uh, viruses and all these uh, new strains that are coming under the virus uh, that they're saying the vaccine may not be work for these strains. Just like the influenza vaccine. It, it, you may give it for the one that passed, but if, uh, if it, if it uh, mutates, it wouldn't work. You would still get the vac, still get the, the sickness. Even if you take the COVID vaccine, you're still going to get sick. That's what uh, Dr. Fauci has been saying. That's what Dr. Jones, let's call him Dr. Jones. That's what Dr. Jones is saying. He say you still could get sick. You still have to wear your mask. You still have to be in lockdown. You still have to be a shelter in place. But there's one way to get away from this and to shelter in the Holy Spirit. Have your anchor hook upon the rock of ages. Amen. The rock of ages. Hallelujah. And it must be God instructed. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost. Amen. How oh, the Holy Ghost. What is happening all over the world is fear. Even in the church it is fear. Oh, praise God. Fear. Fear is bothering the people. Amen. They don't know which way to turn. They don't know which way to go to. Amen. And what's happening? There's going to be a spiritual death. The last plague. The church and its condition. Even the churches out there, they worship in Mary and they're doing all sorts of these things contrary to the word of God. They don't want to accept the Bible as the word of the Lord. They are second Timothy spirits out there, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They would rather go on the internet and they spend hours on the internet on Facebook and WhatsApp and Twitter and uh, Instagram. They will spend hours and hours and hours there and they will not read their Bible. They will not pray. They will not listen to the prophet message. That is what is happening today, man. Praise God. And you try to talk to them about it. And they get angry with you. They come against you. They say evil things against you. Amen. Because they don't understand how God's operate. Amen. Your pastor will preach against it. He will preach against it for the pulpit. And you'll resent it. But one day, one day, brother. One day it's going to come. Amen. And if you don't repent. If you don't seek the face of the Lord. If you don't, uh, you know, read your Bible and pray. If you don't get in this... This shelter, if you don't get on Christ, amen. Yo, do you know your whole life must be wrapped up in the Lord Jesus Christ? You should not have a Laodicea spirit, a spirit of laziness, a spirit of rejection, a spirit of sin. I am rich, oh God, I have a good house now, I have a good place, I have a nice phone, I could go and watch, uh, could go and watch all my internet, I could spend so long time on Facebook, and you're not consecrating yourself before God, you're not seeking this shelter, amen, then something is wrong with your experience, brother. But God is calling to you in open arms. Don't spend so much time on Facebook. Spend so much time. I'm not saying don't spend time on Facebook. No, no, no. You get in touch with your people and so on. But spend more time with the Lord. Amen. Do you know your whole life must be wrapped up, wrapped up in the Lord? Every moment that you wake up is the Lord Jesus. You walk to get your breakfast, Lord Jesus. You walk to go to work, Lord Jesus. Your whole life is wrapped up. Listening to His messages. Listen to the prophet message. Listen to the word of God. Reading your Bible. You, why should we bother about entertainment? And uh, Sure, I'm not saying don't have a little entertainment. Sure, you have a little entertainment. But don't let it take control of your life. If you're spending too much time on Facebook, if you're spending too much time on the internet, if you're spending too much time on videos and movies and TV and all this kind of stuff, and too much time on your job and not thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ, brother, oh brother, oh you, you could end up in the tribulation period. Come back to the Lord, amen. Because God instructed, amen. Manage your time, amen. Manage your time. And what is even the message churches? They don't want to talk about some of these things. They're afraid that the people will leave them and, and, and take away their tithes. Amen. What it is? A lot of these churches, denominations, and even messages in the church have denominational spirit creep back into their churches. Amen. Repent, repent, repent. Come back to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. But from the time a man puts his hand upon the head of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary, or put his hand on the cross and cry to him and the blood washes him 
free from sin. All you have to do, all you have to do, everything that you're saying, everything that you're looking, is what? Is the Lord Jesus. I love you Jesus. I love you. No, think about a, about a young man. Okay, I think about a young lady. You have this young brother in the church that you love and he, he tells you that he cares about you and so on. You, oh, you're only thinking about him. Sure, you're only thinking about when am I going to see him? What is he going to bring for me? Oh, uh, I'm praying to Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I love this guy. I love this guy. He has promised to marry me. Oh, I, I just feel so happy. I'm thinking about him every day. I, I, I go into the book of Solomon. I see him, him and me. I go to the book of uh, in a, in a Genesis. I see him and me. I'm just seeing Lord everything. And that's how you are. To should be about the Lord Jesus Christ. He should be, oh, the, 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 the topmost thing in your life. It's wonderful making money. It's wonderful having a good life. But what is more wonderful is to know that you have a shelter in the time of storm. And that's the rock of ages, the Lord Jesus Christ. Shelter in the time of storm. Amen. Don't fear. Don't let this fear take a hold of you. Shelter in the time of storm. Anchor in the rock. That is the, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. And what it is we see, Amen. The oncoming storm, Amen. The oncoming storm. Praise God. Uh, this storm will, is hitting everyone. Is it in the believers? Is it in the unbelievers? You know why? Because Satan cannot get to you, my brother and sister. My brother and sister, Satan cannot get directly to you because God has built a hedge over you. Satan cannot come to you and attack you like that. So what he does, he brings the world forces against you. Amen. He brings the world. He squeezes the world. He squeezes, uh, you know, the, 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 the economics, the job situation. He squeezes the plagues. He does all these things. So that why? So he will squeeze you. He feels that you will give up. He feels you will run and take the mark of the beast. He feels you will take the number of his name. He will take the name of the beast. He feels that you're going to give allegiance to the, the this big the big guy uh, with a with a skull cap, uh, white robe, sitting in on the seven hills down in uh, uh, Europe. There, Amen. He he feels he wants to bring you to switch your allegiance there, Amen. But brother and sister, we have a shelter in the time of storm. Who is the shelter? Christ Jesus. He is a shelter. He's our God in flesh. He's the one that saved you. He's the one that brought you out. Amen. But we have to make preparation. Let's read this here. Oncoming storm. Amen. Oncoming storm. Phoenix, Arizona. Monday the 29th of February 1960. Paragraph 61. Jesus was speaking here of a coming storm which has got to strike every man and every woman that's born in the world. There's got no, there's no way of it. That storm will strike you sometime or the other. And depends on what kind of foundation you have, whether your house will weather it or not. There's been many lives saved because of the preparation for storms. And there has been many of the lives lost because of failing to take a heed of the warning of storms to come down. Amen. End the quote. And Brother Adam say, here continuing on. Amen. Brother Adam say, I could stop and preach for an hour or more. That will take a greater storm, but it takes a greater storm to come. A higher wind to turn back the storm. Hear what he says? It takes a higher wind to turn back the storm. And so it is today. And we all know that we have got an incoming storm. And the only wind that I know that can turn that storm will be the Russian mighty wind that fell on the day of Pentecost. Amen, amen, amen. Here what Brother Ram say, I've told you that there's men, even the city, speaking against communism. And there should be, but just speaking against it is enough. We've got to find how to turn the thing. Amen. And then there's only one thing that could turn the storm, and that would be more powerful storm that can beset it and change its course. But Brother Ram, end of quote, but the Brother Ram say, he said America is gone. You see, he doesn't even preach from Pray for America no more, it's gone. He say he pray for the rulers, that God will help them. So what he's saying here again, Brabham continuing, Oh, it pays, paragraph 62, Oh, it pays to take warning. The first thing to do, before there can be a warning, there has to be a preparation made for safety. For there is no need of sending a warning. And the warning is only a voice of one having to prepare for the danger. There has to be preparation made first. And then if the preparation is made, then the warning shall go forward to cause you to make your decision whether you want to listen it to it or not. If you don't want to listen it, well, that's up to you. You do listen to it. There is safety. Amen. Praise God. End of quote. And Brother Abraham said, it's up to you. 
It's up to you to believe or not to believe. Amen. It's up to you to take the warning or not to take the warning. Amen. Hallelujah. What it is we say in here today, brother, that there's a warning. There's a storm. And you know what? It's not coming. We are in the storm. We are in the beginning of the storm. Amen. And you've got to take warning. And this storm, there's only one shelter. There's only one thing. It's the wind of the Holy Spirit to drive that storm from around you. The wind of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's one anchor. And that's the anchor in Jesus Christ. Amen. So it takes to take warning, to listen. There are only two types of people. There's the believer and the unbeliever. Amen. The believer will take on the warning. Amen. And the believer is born of above. Amen. We are just pilgrims and strangers in this world. The squeeze is on. The storm is on. But there's only one way that you could escape from the storm. And that's by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As I was saying, the train is coming down the line. It is almost in the train station. Do you have the token? Do you have the ticket? Examine yourself. Go through all your pockets. Look in all over. See if you have that token. If not, run quickly and get the Holy Spirit. Let's continue. Paragraph, uh, bottom part of paragraph 81. Uh, uh, Burbanum wife Mida was saying, well, we are Americans. They are Americans. And Burbanum said, but we are, uh, no, sorry, Burbanum said they were Americans. Some people who are going to church and don't live a correct, a decent life. And Mida said, but aren't we Americans too? Burbanum said, no, we just live here. We'll be born from above. The Holy Spirit come upon us. So it's a paragraph, last part of paragraph 81. Therefore we are pilgrims and strangers here. This is not our abiding place. But we are seeking a city to come whose builder and maker is God. Therefore when you are born of today, you have the Holy Spirit come down from God. That changes your nature. No matter your sister, your mother, your best friend could be dressed that way. But a Christian that is born of the Spirit of God is born from above. And their spirit is of another kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Paragraph 85. Amen. I'm so glad that the simplest of the whole, simpleness of the Holy Spirit to follow it, to watch it, and that's the way it is in the days of Noah. And God got so filled up of, the, of it, but before He sent a storm to destroy the entire entire world, God made preparation for those who wanted to stay out of it. And I could see Noah standing at the door of the ark, preaching righteousness. Now everybody, I interject, everybody was saying, Oh Noah seemed to be a, a, a prophet of doom and gloom. Amen. Because he's preaching, uh, judgment is coming, judgment is coming, rain is coming, rain is coming, rain is coming. They say he's a preacher of doom and gloom. But that's, that's because, uh, you know, he heard from God. In, continue to quote, and there wasn't many who would listen to him. There was something like that. They want entertainment, not the gospel. They uh, interject Facebook and videos. And an internet and all that stuff. Before they see God, they want inter- entertainment, not the gospel. Warn to those Hollywood evangelists who's afraid to call sin sin. We need some of the old-fashioned backwards preacher that got the Holy Spirit that's not afraid to preach the gospel with their bare hands, not covered with some kind of a rubber glove, but preach the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, judgment for the wicked, and heaven for the righteous, and the near approach. In what season? I don't know. And no one else knows, but I'll, I'll warn my generation. If it comes now, I want to war, I want them to be warned. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want, end of quote, I want to warn them. And that's what I am. People, someone was, someone said to me, oh, all his listen is only tapes. All you only listen is, is that thing whole day. Amen. And you're reading whole day and you're at your desk studying whole day. Amen. You know, and, uh, you know, but, but you got to understand. That this is a crucial time. I rather do all that now and make sure that I'm ready for this rapture, ready for the squeeze that is upon me. Anchor myself in the rock, amen. Then go and, and, and what to do? Some frivolous thing outside or, or go out and, and, and shop or go or whatever they would want me to do. No. I want to spend some time and yesterday I spent a lot of time trying to get the mind of Christ to speak to you today. I, God is going to hold me responsible. He's not going to hold my wife responsible or my mother or my sister or my brother or you out there responsible. He's going to hold me responsible for your soul and I am responsible for your soul and I have to tell you the word of the Lord whether you like it or not brother. So if you are a backslider, come back to the Lord. Amen. The uncommon stone, paragraph 96. People today seem to be so comfortable in sin because we own a new car, because we eat three meals a day, sleep on a clean bed. That's wonderful. 
but that will be good. But we forget God when prosperity, prosperity comes like that. I think we have been, we preachers and we Christians have been so interested in the program of building our churches and getting a better church or something like that. Or a bigger church, better pews. And you know how and what I mean. And we have left off the main thing. Judgment, righteousness, power of the Holy Ghost, resurrection, eternal judgment. The angel never failed to preach the message. Although they tried to stop them. But the message went on the same. And when a man that would, paragraph 98. Well, a man that would reject Jesus Christ as the same grounds the Holy Spirit is more real than sunshine. The sun will fail, but the Holy Spirit can't fail. Amen, amen, amen. And brother and sister, we have a rock. We have a rock, amen. We have a rock, amen, that we have anchored in the Holy Spirit. A rock, amen, in the shelter. A shelter in the time of storm. A rock is immovable, amen. Praise God. Paragraph 104. And how comfortable it is to see the oncoming judgments. And to feel that comfort feeling of the Holy Spirit. Hear them talk about atomic bombs. And just think that, that w that's what happened. A peace that passeth understanding. Why the bomb will no more go out of the gun. Until we'll be in the presence of Jesus. With eternal life. We old people back young again. The babies up to our age. With no more death or sorrow. Oh what's a wonderful thing. You mean a man could refuse to come out. And walk in that. That's something wrong with him. Amen. And what happened? Amen in Gershon. Paragraph 106, last part. Praise God, Amen. The Egyptian de uh, doctors, which were far smarter than ours today, could not stop the plagues of God. No, neither could their soothsayers or their impersonators. It took Gershon and the power of God to hold his people under the blood of the Lamb. The Holy Spirit is the door today. The Holy Spirit is the safety today. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, <coughs> paragraph 134, amen. I just want to read all these quotes in for you tonight, to this morning. Praise God, amen. Paragraph 132, oh, the same in oncoming storm. There's an hour coming, and now is, and the ceiling is about over. That where every man and woman on the face of the earth is going to be in the place of refuge. Like it was in the days of Noah. Or be on the outside of it. We have to make a decision. That safety is Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ. He is the only place. The only one who has eternal life. No man can come to the Father. But by Him. He is the ark of our safety. The Holy Spirit bears record with, record with us now. That we have passed from death unto life. And when we look at the grave, I know that each one of us is going there if the Lord doesn't come. We see the newspapers and the oncoming storm. When we go home tonight, when you go home today, this morning, do not do me a favor. Don't go to bed till you read Revelation, the 8th chapter. You see the oncoming plagues and storms that shall hit the earth. And thunders and lightnings are going to shake the heavens. Woes are coming to pass over the nation. Men will rot in their flesh. Diseases will strike them. The doctors know nothing about but remember, before that took place, there was a ceiling went off, went forth. And the death angels and the plagues were commissioned by God. Don't come near any of those who has the seal on their forehead. And the seal of God is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. No matter how hard the, the ark rock, no matter how many times the lightning struck close to it, ten thousand shall fall on your right. And a thousand on your left. And it shall not come near thee. Amen. The Holy Spirit. End of quote. Amen. What is it? The rock is Jesus. The rock is Jesus. Seek the, and anchor your soul in that rock. The plagues will go left. The plagues will go right. Amen. Ten thousand will fall on you. Thousand fall on your left. Ten thousand on your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Why? Because you are anchored in Jehovah. Amen. Oh, I'm anchored myself, my soul in the cliff of the rock. Amen. I'll sail these wild seas no more. Oh, the billows may come against me. The waves may come against me. The plagues will come against me. Oh, praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All these things, uh, you know, is coming against me. They want to force this upon me. They want to force that upon me. But thus said the Lord God of Israel, He will not forsake you. Amen. Anchor your soul in the, in the cliff of the rock. It is Jesus Christ. Amen. The same yesterday, today and forever. Why? Your flesh of His flesh. 
your boon of his boon, spirit of his spirit, life of his life, amen. Abraham and his seed after him, Chicago, Illinois, Sunday the 23rd of April, 1961. Code Brabranum, paragraph 68. Can you see where Lot sets? Can you see where the message is? Can you see the message that's going to the elected church? Amen. The power of God back amongst the people. God dwelling in human skin of his own church. Performing those same signs that they call mind reading, mental telepathy, fortune telling. No wonder they are doomed. Amen. No wonder guided missile. They call it in the air and they know nothing about it. Amen. Amen. Continue to quote the second part of paragraph 69. Oh, look at Jesus. We don't understand it. When Jesus was coming to the room through a stone wall, the doors being shut and stood there after he had his glorified body. Eat flesh. Hallelujah. Glory. You talk about space age. The church is fixing to take this. And I'm just telling you, this is one of the things when you anchored in Christ, what is God happening to you? Imagine. Amen. And I end of quote here. Imagine. Amen. Imagine what he's saying. He's saying that you, God is going to come upon you. Dynamics is going to come upon you. Holy Ghost is going to fill you. Amen. And what is going to happen to you? Amen. You'll be able to walk through walls. Then, then tell me how a virus could take you. How could this COVID take you? Or every COVID 20, 21, 22, whatever is coming down. Anything could take you. How could it take you? When the Holy Ghost is upon you and you could walk through walls, you could speak the word, it will flash like lightning. Amen. A glorious body He would give you. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. What is going to happen, brother? What are we looking for? Once you anchor yourself, once you anchor yourself in the rock of ages, once you anchor yourself in Jesus Christ, once you are full of the Holy Ghost, we are looking for many things. Amen. Do you know that God in Abraham, Amen, He changed Abraham. Amen. He promised Abraham a seed and He changed Abraham and Sarah. And they, no, He did not change them to how they were as young men and young women. No, 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 no. Because look at something. And when Abraham and Isaac, uh, Abraham and, and, um, and Sarah were young, they couldn't have children. So God had to do more to them than changing back to when they were like young people. Amen. He didn't change them back to when they were like young people. No. He gave them a new body. A new body was what? A new change so that Sarah could have a child. Amen. Because if he had changed them back to a body like how they were when they were young, Sarah was barren. Amen? But no, he changed them back. Let's read it. Probably said it. Abraham and the seed after him. Chicago, Illinois. Sunday the 23rd of April 1961. And let's read paragraph. Amen. <clears throat> let's read paragraph. Uh, the last part of paragraph 75. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And to the church in Sodom, so shall it be. Now we see where they are standing now, don't we? We see the names, everything, place just exactly, just perfectly where we are setting. What did the Lord God do to them? Immediately after that, as I've told this many times before, I preached it on one time to you. The Lord God changed Abraham and Sarah body and put them back to a young man and women. Amen. Continuing the quote. No, he said he changed her body. Why? He had to change her body in order to receive the promised son. And that's the next thing in order. The changing of the body. The rapture. Amen. Now if you notice. Abraham said. And then if you have just look at Abraham. said, Abraham, I'm going to turn you back to a young man. How's you, how you were. Going to turn Sarah back to a young woman. Oh, no, you all must just go ahead and have the son. That wouldn't have done it. Because they lived together when they were young and didn't, couldn't have a son. They did not have any son. And they have lived together all these years. If he had just changed them back, they would have to, then they would have to be a different church, a different change, amen. So what he did, end of quote. What he did, he changed them into a new young man, new young woman body that she could have bear a child. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking for a change of a body to make the rapture, amen. Paragraph 78, but Jesus came from heaven to earth in a thought. Glory. And the church will be the same way. Hear what Brother Bram said. I'm going to lay it kind of quickly. I don't have much time of some of the promises laying before you. So first of all, your body is going to be changed. 
No, I'm not sure about the difference, which first, which second, which third. But I'm just going to tell you the promise. Lay it over you, the promise. Your body is going to be changed. You're going to be a young man and a young woman once again. And not a young woman and a young woman when you were small. You had allergies, you had asthma. No, 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 no. Completely well, a new body, a new change, just like Abraham and Sarah. New body, new change. Amen. So what is God, what did Abraham say? He said, Jesus came from heaven to earth in a thought. Abraham said, glory. And hear what he says now. The bride, the church will be the same way. Whoa. Hold on one second. This sounds like science fiction. But no, this is going to happen. This is when you are anchored in Christ. You will be transformed. You will be changed like a thought. Amen. Hear what Abraham said. And the church will be the same way. Pass light with such speed. Glory to God. You said, how can it be done? Well, how do you know it done? Only thing I know is inches and yards and miles and days and weeks and hours and minutes. That's the way of finite man, of course, figured out. We are in the womb of the earth. But wait until we are born once on the other side. Glory. Wait until this change come. Yes. Then space to come like in, in the form like the glory is in just one split half instance. Such speed pass right through the wall. Don't even know it. It's there. There you are. Those earthly things would be so simple. Oh my, there won't be uh, nothing to it. No, sir. And we know our bodies will have to be changed for this. And it wouldn't be just go back to young men, men and women, but it'll have to be changed. You see, Bro Branham said, Amen, it had to be changed because Abraham and Sarah's body had to be changed in a way that they could conceive the promised son. That's Abraham, his body had to be changed. Now, well, the church has come through justification. Baptism of the Holy Ghost, gifts manifested to it. And now what? The Spirit of God is moving in the church, doing the same works that Jesus did before He left us a promise. And what's the next thing? The change. The next thing happened to Abraham was the change body. He had to have it. He would have never got the Son. And the next thing happens to the church is the rapture. We have to be changed and caught up in the air to meet Him. We can't meet Him on the earth. We have got to go in the air to meet Him. It's the coming Son, the promised Son. Amen. We have looked for Him now for hundreds of years. He will come someday. But the next thing for the church is to be changed. We have had every single sign. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, placing of a Son, manifestation of the, manifestation of the Spirit. Now what? The changing of the body to go in the rapture. Amen. Paragraph uh, 81's last part. The rapture will be universal and their bodies will be changed. Our bodies will have to be changed. We just can't turn back to young men and women. We've got to have a different kind of body so you can be caught up to meet, the, receive the promise on. End of quote, amen. Oh, the next thing is a change of the body to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Amen, end of quote. So you know what has happened. This earth is going to be blown up. Amen. Oh, but before one speck of fire fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot came out. Amen. So shall it be in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. <clears throat> what are we saying? Before the nukes fall upon America, we'll be caught up to meet Him in the air. And what's the next thing we're waiting for? We're waiting for that Holy Spirit anointing to strike your dynamics, strike your mechanics, and then come forth and bring forth the manifestation of the Son of God. Now you say, brother, sister, let me just read uh, the same Abraham and the seed, paragraph 86. The next thing is waiting for the elected and called out seed of Abraham who recognize the manifestation of God among his people and standing and waiting. That will be the one that will be caught up to meet him in the air. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. But brother, you could scream, you could shout, you could say, I go to church, you could do all these things. That's wonderful. But brother, if you don't have, if you haven't met Jesus Christ face to face, amen, if you haven't met Him, if you haven't got His Spirit inside of you, brother, you will not make this rapture. You will not survive the storm. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Abraham prophesied, I could read again, we run out of time, we prophesied about uh, we would scream to have a convention and we wouldn't be able to have it. And that's exactly what we're happening now. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, Brother Abraham said, now, we're talking about there are four critical things. Now, you say, well, Brother Sipasar, how can I get anchored? 
first of all, you've got to receive that Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is that rock. It must come in you. But there are four critical things as a believer you must do. Amen. You must pray without ceasing. You must, one, number one. Number two, you must read your Bible every day. Consecrate yourself. Pray and consecrate yourself without ceasing. Day and night and going and going and going in the presence of the Lord. That's number one. Number two, you've got to read your Bible and read your Bible. And when you read your Bible and pray, God will open up His Word to you. Amen. And then you must read and listen to the prophet message. That's the third. You must do this third thing. Read and listen to the prophet message. Amen. And listen to the minister minister unto you. Amen. Just don't read the prophet message and say, I don't want to hear no minister. There's no more five minister in gift. No. You've got to read and listen to the prophet message on your own. But also listen to your minister. And then what the fourth thing is, neglect not the fellowship and of your brothers. You must go to a church or get under the internet and be under the ministry that this uh, minister is minister unto you. Those are the four important things. For And then, oh, but you're already accepted in Christ. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So what we're looking for, what we're looking for, we're looking for you to become the word. So you'll escape the storm. You must become the word. And how would you become the word? You know, uh, how can you come the word without hearing the word of God? For the word of God will bring it unto you and will stir in your heart and grow word upon word upon word. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's read a quote here from Brother Branham. He's talking about the third pull now. Now, what is that third pull? Now, the, the first pull, you know, it bring the little people in. A pull is a, is a pulling in. It's a power. It's a strength that could pull. It's the third pull. Amen. It's a strength like, let's interpret it as a, as a power. Amen. That you have, that you could reach out and grab something and pull it in. Uh, although it's forcing you not to do it. And that's what the third pull. And the third pull comes with the dynamics to mechanics. The third pull comes with a manifestation of the, the sons and daughters of God. According to Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. God wants to walk in you. God wants to talk in you. And He wants to walk in your footsteps. And then you become His sons and His daughter. And He become your father. Amen. So that third pull is a power. That third pull is an anointing. That third pull is an authority. No, people, Barbara has left the scene. People say, oh, the third pull is gone. No, 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 no. I've never seen anywhere in the scripture where God said He took away that anointing, that power, that authority of Adam. Amen. It's here on earth for you to reach, receive it, to accept it. Amen. Praise God to be a manifested Son of God. Look away to Jesus. Amen. Jeffersonville, Indiana, Sunday the 29th of December 1963, even service. Paragraph 38, quote Brother Branham, and now I'm going to say something to you. Now that I haven't said all along, and that, and that is the thing that we have looked forward for so long, for at least many years, four or five years, or maybe longer, the third pull has now been vindicated. And I'm sure you all know what it is. Now remember, there will never be an impersonation of that. Satan cannot create. Satan cannot love. The third pull is love and creation. Because it cannot be. And Satan, you know, the word of, cannot be the word of God. And because it cannot be. See, it cannot be. Now it's in existence. Hear what the prophet say? 1963, it's in existence. And I'm warned of this, that soon, right at this time, now it just happened. So it could identify its presence among you, see? But it will not be used in a great way until this council begins to tighten. You know what he's saying? The squeeze. And when it does... The Pentecostal and so forth can almost impersonate anything can be done. But when the time comes, when the squeeze comes down, then you will see what you have seen temporarily be manifested in the fullness of the power. See? Amen. Brabham said the third pull is here. And it will, this will be a thing that will start the rupture in faith for the going away. Amen. Hear what Brabham say here. Uh, paragraph 45. There is coming a time that this nation to where this nation is going to exercise all power that the beast had before it, which was pagan Rome, when it became papal Rome. See, that this nation will do it. And for the uh, end of quote, and for the first time since 1962 or whatever, with JFK, we have a Roman Catholic president. And the Roman Catholic, if you notice, amen, at where he sits, uh, where he's, uh, our president sits in his desk, and you look behind him, what do you see? His family and a picture of the Pope. Amen. Oh, it says, everybody knows that. It's there sitting behind. So understand, brother, where a Roman Catholic allegiance is. And the Pope 
the Pope insists that you must have allegiance to the Roman Catholic Church and to the Pope. Amen. So that's what's going to happen. So be warned, brother and sister. It's taking place. Amen. It's happening. It's a tightening. Then when that time comes and the press comes to a place, this is look away to Jesus. Paragraph 49. And press comes to a place where you are pressed out. Then watch what I'm fixing to tell you in a few minutes. Watch the third pull then see. It will be absolutely to the loss, but it will be for the church and bride. You see, end of quote, he's saying it is two things. It is for the loss, because you're going to preach to the loss, and it's for you, the bride, to manifest the son, uh, to manifest the son and daughter of God. Amen. And what is that third pull? Elen Braban spoke the third pull. He said, little fishy, I give you life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he, uh, and that was the third pull. That was the power and authority to give life. Amen. Resurrection. Amen. Through Jesus Christ living in Brabranum. Spoke the word to the little fishy. And then Sister Hattie is right. Two sons. He said, I give you salvation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And right away the two boys fell at their feet repenting. Now there's no uh, you know, salvation without repentance. So they had to come and fall at their feet and repent. Amen. And then Brother Branham spoke the word and squirrels appear. Amen. That is what the, fa- the, the, the third one. And then he spoke to the wind. He spoke to the storm. He said, peace be still. Just as Jesus woke up from the boat, put his foot on the bow and speak to the waves and the wind and said, peace be still. Amen. As I said here uh, last service, he didn't call for a prayer meeting. He didn't say, let's hold hands. Anybody has a lamb, let's make a sacrifice. Let's call upon God. Let's call up everybody else to pray. No, he stood on the bow of the boat and spoke those words, peace be still. And so it is as you, as a member of the Lord Jesus Christ, when that third pull anointing comes upon you, you're going to speak the word. When you need food on your table, you're going to speak the word. I remember a part with my... My pastor, when I was a young man who baptized me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Sankey, he used to preach that way back then. He used to lay the foundation of the people and tell them. He said, when you need food up on the table, table, when the squeeze comes, you'll have to speak the word under that anointing and it will be the third pull. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. It's absolutely for the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is the fourth, what is the fifth one? The fifth one was the healing of Sister Mira, the spoken word healing. Amen. Now I'll just go through that a little bit. Let's see if I could I could close off with that. Amen. Sister Mira is healing. Oh praise God. Now Sister Mira did something. That was displeasing to the Lord. I can't read all the quote. It said, look away to Jesus. She did. She raised her voice against the prophet. She uh, she was disrespectful to the prophet. She said things that was not right to the prophet. Amen. No, the prophet was not really hurt about it. He said, you know, she's under pressure. But she said, did something that the Lord was displeased. Amen. And what happened? What happened is that, you know, she... What happened? She developed a tumor. Uh, on her ovary, amen. And no matter how much Brother Branham prayed, and Sister Mita prayed, and the church prayed, it got worse and worse and worse, Brother Branham say. He said, no matter how much we prayed, it got worse and worse and worse. And Brother Branham said, you know what? He remembered, um, he remembered, uh, Moses. Amen. Moses married an Ethiopian woman. Amen. And what happened? Miriam was upset with that. And she kind of disrespected Moses. And what happened? God was displeased with that. You see, a man of God stand and fall only to his master and Lord. You don't know what a man of God has to go through. Amen. Don't make fun of that man. of. Don't make fun of your pastor. Don't make fun of that minister. You don't know what he's going through. Amen. You displease God. When you do that, amen. What happened to Miriam? She broke out in leprosy. And God called them into the tent and said, Miriam and, and Aaron, listen. I would talk to you. I would bless you and so on. I would talk to other people. He said, but my servant Moses, you don't know what he's have to go through. I speak to him lip to air. So you don't know, my brother and sister, what your pastor is going through, what that minister is going through. God might be speaking to him, lip and air. You don't know after the service how he's wiped out. He needs a rest. Otherwise, he just, he's not, he just can't help it. Don't make fun of it. Don't, don't, don't say something in a disparate way. You don't know what he's going through. You don't know when he's preaching that anointing. is like a young man. He's healed. He has no diabetes. He has no sickness. He has no pulse. He has nothing. He's standing in the presence of God. Respect your pastor. Respect that minister, amen. And Sister Mira disrespected the prophet. No, Prabhupada prayed and asked the Lord, but the more they pray about it, is the more it become it worse and worse and more, worse and worse. 
Until, until Brother Branham laid before the Lord and said, Please Lord, she has to go for this operation now. The thing is big as a, a, a melon. And on her side, they took x-ray. And they took all the, she's on her way to the hospital. Brother Branham said, Lord, please, my wife. She's my, she's my help, Lord. She's a nice woman. She tries, she take care of me. She helped me wash my clothes. She cooks, she, she, well, probably must have said she must be a little cranky sometimes, it's true. She's probably going through a uh, time of life and all that stuff. But Lord, just forgive her, Lord. She didn't mean to do that way, oh Lord. Amen. And then what happened? The angel of the Lord said, whatever you see. It shall come to pass. Whatever you see. And Brother Bram said, Before the doctors touches my wife, may that tumor leave her. Amen. That was the fifth manifestation of a son of God. The fifth manifestation of the third pull. And what happened? Amen. Me, the sister me, the went up, climbed up on the, on the, on the gurney. They were ready to the operation. The, the, the doctor had his knife on his hand. And is ready to 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 to, uh, to make the cut the incision. And what he did, as he was about to reach forward before uh, to move the sheet to see where the the, the tumor was, Sister Mira said she felt a cool anointing, and the, the tumor disappeared. The, the the doctor moved the sheet, said, where, "Where is the tumor? Oh, probably in the next side." They they went on the other side. No, it's not there. So could you bring the X-ray? They brought the X-ray. Oh, it's showing the tumor. But when he examined her, she was completely well. What was it? Third pull manifestation. The spoken word of healing. Brother Bram said, when the squeeze is upon you, what is going to happen? He said, watch divine healing. Watch divine healing in a mighty way. There's got to be a lot of signs, wonders and miracles to follow these the very few members of the bride. Brother Bram said, it's going to be a handful. He said, if 500 people missing from the earth, then you wouldn't even know this. 700 people. Amen. Oh, missing. He said it's going to be a small group of people. Amen. So Sister Mira was healed. Amen. What was that? Amen. God's grace to the prophet. Amen. Brother Abraham say, you women, as you serve your husband, you serve God. You know what? Some American woman said, I am no slave. Well, you know, you're not a slave. Hear what Brother Abraham say? You serve your husband. Amen. And God will reward you as you serve your husband. Do you know the Bible say you have to show respect? Do you know the Bible say, Amen, you must reverence? You know what reverence means? It's almost like you're reverencing God. And God will honor you. Amen. Amen. He will honor you. Amen. 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 What was it? He said before the doctor's hand and she was completely healed. But Abraham said, I'm, it's no doubt in my mind. I know that the third pull is on. And I know what it does. No, be reverent. Just keep quiet. The hour will soon arrive. Now, if we want to see the third pull, really do something of God, it's coordinated with every one of us to humble yourself. This is humble thyself. Jeffersonville, Indiana. After rush through, our time is running out. To, get, to humble ourselves before God and confess our wrong and pray and believe God will do these things. You know, people want power. And really, they don't know what power is. See, you don't know what really it is, what, what does with it. Amen? The way up is down. Always, always. If you want power, see how humble you can get. Just get away from all your worldly thinking and humble yourself before God. And then you've got more power than the man that runs all over the building and makes a lot of noise. See? Because you've been able to conquer yourself and commit yourself to Christ. You see? To humble yourself before Him. That's really the power. Amen. End of quote. Amen. Brother and sister, the four things we showed you, amen. But humble yourself before the Lord and He is going to bring it to you. That anointing is going to strike you. You will have that power and authority to be a manifested son of God and speak to the wind, speak to the wave, give life to little fish here. Whatever God may lay upon your heart to do, that Holy Spirit in you will lead you to speak the word, amen, oh, for your family and they'll fall at your feet and repent. I don't know what God is going to lead you. Wherever He's going to lead you, you are son of God. Your name is on the check. It's just as His name. Why? Your flesh of His flesh. Your bone of your bone. You have anchored yourself in the shelter now that the storm is all around us. Souls that are in prison now. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday the 10th of November 1963 morning service. In the Barbara Court, 341. Not by speaking in tongues, not by dancing in the Spirit, not by joining church, not by the fruit of the Spirit. Christian science can outsmother any of you on that. See? And deny even Jesus Christ was divine. Not that, but it's the Word living. There it is. 
and I interject is faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and brotherly love, brotherly kindness and kindness and meekness and humbleness and gentleness and peace and then charity will come. Oh, glory to God will come upon you. Praise God, I feel power upon that one. Amen. And a, and a man that's got, sorry, but it's the word living. There it is. If you have only looked, he was Messiah. He was the living word made manifest. And a man that's got the Spirit of God in him, a woman, lives that word, lives right out in them. That's the heartbreak. The predestinated for the word of the Lord comes to them. And they are the word to the people. Written epistles, read of all men. Is that right? Could the third pull be on, brother? What if it is? Look at the scripture pile in there. Could it be? Could it be? The third pull preached to the eternal doom and it's rejected by the message. Amen. That's rejected the message and salvation. Amen. The seventh seal brings him back, brings the Lord Jesus Christ back to the earth. The Lamb come and, and took the book out of the right hand of him and sat down and claimed what he owned and that he redeemed. That's right. It's always been that third pull. Three is perfection. The ministry come into its perfection when it produced Christ again in the natural amongst human beings as we predicted as it was in the days of Lord. I interject right here. So what is going to happen? The Holy Ghost, the ministry, the third pull will come forth and bring forth Jesus Christ himself in human skin living in you, walking upon the earth. Is Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, 20, 19 or 20 to 22. It says, Behold, I am at the door and the knock. Never was in the history of the church ages was this happening. But Jesus Christ is at the door. Let Him come in. Let the Holy Ghost and anchor yourself in Him. Amen. And the vision was that. It's been so hard against uh, women. But the, the door is closed, gone already. The book in His hand when Christ comes upon the earth. End of quote. We run out of our time. Amen. Christ in you the hope of glory. Are you abiding in the blessed secret presence of the Lord? Have you passed from death unto life? Are you resting upon you some are you resting on some emotion, some psychological effect, or some intellectual speak speech, or are you constantly abiding in his presence with the fruit of the spirit in your life, long suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness? Can you be bear for someone to talk about you and you love them so much till your heart pray for them? Oh are you in the church triumphant? Oh hallelujah. Oh what what had to happen? You had to have something settling in your heart. Amen. Settling in your heart to know that the Holy Spirit is here with you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The storm is here. The storm is coming. But there's a hiding place. A blessed hiding place in the Lamb, in the rock, in the rock of ages. Amen. So praise God. Hallelujah. Where is that shelter? That shelter is in Jesus. And when you're in that shelter, you're going to get ready for that rapture. This shelter is going to teach you to get ready for the rapture. It's the rapture. Amen. The rapture of the church. Amen. It's going to be very few. But are you in that church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Oh, find shelter. Find shelter. Find shelter in the rock of ages. Shall we stand? Amen, amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, think about it tonight, brother, today, this morning, this afternoon, brother and sister. Think about it. Are you in that church triumphant? Are you in that Savior's bride? Come and be baptized into the body and forevermore abide. Amen, many, many men. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to get the, 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 the number of that, uh, that song. But you, you know what it is? It's the blood that washes away all your sins. Amen. That's the blood that washes away your sins. That's the blood that cleanses you. And then you're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you receive that Holy Spirit living in you. Get that Holy Ghost in you. Get that Holy Ghost in you. Do not let it de delay, brother, sister. You must receive that Holy Spirit. Amen. For you to make that next step. So you're anchored in the, in the, in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sing the song. Have you been baptized into the body? Oh, have you been baptized into the body? Baptized with the Holy Ghost. There is but one way to enter in it. Just as they did on Pentecost. Uh, hymn number 129, Only Believe. Are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? 
come and be baptized into the body and forevermore abide. There is but one church and bride of body and into it we are all baptized by the one true promise Holy Spirit though by the world we are all despised and every creed has claimed to be the body oh but the plumb life proved untrue all their dreams for God has so determined to bring his sons through bright true view and many thought that they were in the body Oh, till the Holy Ghost had come When the word of God was open to them They entered in and yet there is room And those who died before the Holy Spirit Came upon us from on high me by faith with saints of holy departed arise to meet him in the sky and when the bridegroom comes will you be ready and your vessel all filled and bright you will be among the foolish virgins who oh, if you do not walk in the light who oh, are you in the church triumphant are you in the Savior's bride come and be baptized into the body and forever more about Amen. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. Father God, we praise you. Father God, we know, Lord God, Lord, that, that shelter is in the rock of revelation. That shelter is a rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. That shelter is a revelation for the hour, Lord. We have to understand, Lord God, these four things, O oh Lord. And we understand, in Lord, that we have to pray without ceasing. Pray and dedicate ourselves, Lord. Going in and out of the Spirit all the time. Just going on and on, abiding in the abiding glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. Oh God, and the second thing, we must read our Bible. We need to pray, O oh great God, and seek your face. And to listen listen the prophet message and to listen the, the message as, uh, in the, of your ministers oh Lord God and the last thing is that we not forsake Lord the assembling of ourselves together under the internet on the church wherever it might be Lord we have understood this we want to anchor ourselves in the rock of ages we want to anchor ourselves in the word of the living God we want to become that word help your people Lord fill them with the Holy Spirit pour out your Holy Spirit the same Holy Spirit as upon me and bless and now Lord pour it out upon those on the internet Lord may the backslider come back to you may oh God those who have already filled with the Holy Spirit receive a refilling of the Holy Spirit those who Lord God are unsaved Lord convict their heart that they will come and repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and then fill them all with the Holy Spirit and those who are sitting there Lord oh God who don't have the Holy Spirit and are seeking for that Holy Spirit Lord baptize them and fill them Lord I see the train coming down the track Lord we are standing and then many of us have that token waiting Lord but many of us do not have that token may they run quickly unto you Lord fall at your feet and repent to receive the Holy Spirit Father help your people this week Lord the squeeze is on, the trials are on, the tribulations are on, the persecution is on. Help your people this night, Lord. This evening, Lord, help them, Lord. Give them grace and wisdom and understanding. Forsake them not utterly, Lord. Raise them up, Lord. I know you like a lot of these people who seek your face and denominational people. Oh, Lord, you like them, Lord. You bless them. But what about your bride, oh, Lord? Your, 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 uh, your girlfriend, Lord. Your soon coming, your, your bride, Lord Jesus. Oh, what a one that you love Lord the collective body of the Lord Jesus Christ your bride she's called by your name Lord we are individual members of the bride hear our prayer come down in a mighty way as never seen before Lord we want to see that third pulling manifestation because the squeeze is coming within a few months Lord before by Easter it's going to be so hard and so difficult and worse by the end of by coming September Lord oh great God of heaven hear our prayer help your bride today Lord the 
squeeze is on, Lord. The storm is here, Lord. Oh, God, help your people, Lord Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Make them, Lord God, rejoice in this time of trial. And rejoice in this time, Lord. Tell them that you're with them. Show them that you're with them. Vindicate the word to them, we pray. Oh, God, bless them this week. Heal the sick, Lord. Your word said, Brother Adam said, that the, the divine healing will be a great thing, Lord. Lord, we speak in that word above your people today, Lord, that they will be healed. They will be sealed. They will be transformed, Lord. Divine healing will come down, Lord Jesus, upon, Lord, your people, Lord, members of the church, Lord God. Oh, whoever is listening, Lord, divine healing, Lord, going to come down by the Holy Spirit. Grant it and help your people, Lord. Lord, and those who have made mistakes and make faults, let them come to repentance. And let them know, Lord, Lord God, that this is the Holy Spirit. This is you, Lord God, and this is your word, Lord. Help your servant to, to preach this word without favor, without favor, without, Lord, wavering, Lord, I pray. Bless the people, Lord. My mother, may you touch my mother, Lord. Oh God, she need this touch, Lord, her mind. Touch her, Lord, and heal her. May she be well, oh Lord Jesus, I pray. Oh Lord, our family that is out there. Lord God, our children and our grandchildren and our family that are out there. Oh, sweep over, Lord, them and bring them to, Lord God, God, Lord, repentance and save them, Lord God, I pray. My nephews, my nieces, oh God, bring them to you, we pray. We all have unsaved ones out there, Lord. Help them, Lord. Even some of our children, Lord God, help them and bring them to you, we pray. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. As we come to the end of the broadcast, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. And may He give you peace and joy and help you this week. Brother and sister, the best thing is always to do is to go before the Lord. Repent. Even if you know you, you don't even know what you have done wrong because our righteousness are like filthy rags. If we get up in the morning and if you cry unto him and you repent, Lord, I was wrong. I did wrong. I said wrong. I acted wrong. I do it every day, brother. I want to be sure. Uh, don't, don't be, don't let, don't let a stubborn spirit come upon you that you don't want to repent. This is the word of the Lord. Repent. Even if you feel you're right. That's right. Repent. Come before the Lord. Every morning you get up. Lord, every night before you go to bed. Lord, I'm wrong. I make mistake. I want to be perfect. Help me, Lord. So help me, Lord. So brother and sister, may God bless you. Be humble. Be sweet. Wait upon the Lord. Ask the Lord. He's going to give in to you. He's going to give. He loves you. He loves you. He is, as I said, his girlfriend, his bride. He loves you. He loves you. He will pour the Spirit upon you. May God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And those on Facebook, I'm hoping I'm able to to, um, to put a message on Facebook. And also those uh, on the website, I'm going to try, uh, once they allow me to uh, convert the message to YouTube, the message will be on the site. I will also um, uh, email the link to uh, the message. May God bless you all richly. In Jesus Christ's name.